together one more time. Please remain standing. See about 25 or 30 of us got something out of that. Even if you didn't, I did. That was for me. Y'all excuse me. That right there. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory, glory, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Get your Bibles and turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. I want to look at verse 22 and 23. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. This is called a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus would take his disciples and a handful of followers, people who had caught the message and, and would not let go of him. And they, they're on the mountaintop and he had them all sit down because he's the rabbi, he's the teacher. And he begins to teach them something that is controversial. And, and I can see them all sitting on the ground with him standing up, teacher to pupil. And he's teaching and he says to them in verse number 22, he's been talking about giving and he's been talking about generosity. And right in the middle, after saying where your treasures is, your heart is also, instead of going on to say no man can serve two masters in verse number uh, 23, he stopped in verse number 24, he stops at verse number 22 and 23 and he sticks this in right in the middle he says the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light verse 23 but everybody say but Oh, you know, but means things about to get ready to change. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? I'm going to look right there to verse 23. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. This morning, I want to speak from the thought. Focus on yourself with a sub-thought. Fix your bad eye. Fix your bad eye. Uh, before you take your seat, nudge your neighbor and tell them you got to fix your bad eye. You got to fix, you got to fix you got to fix your bad eye. Go ahead and take your seat. You got to fix your bad eye. Yeah. I come from a line of folks where every once in a while I see one with a lazy eye. You got to fix your bad eye. You got to fix how you see what you see. Jesus is teaching a principle of the kingdom. He's saying, I want you to understand this new way of living. He talks about the kingdom of God and he talks about the kingdom of the world. He says, I want you to understand that there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God. He says, also, I want you to understand there are two kingdoms and you have to figure out which kingdom you're going to live in. Even while you're living in the kingdom of the earth, you must not forget there's a kingdom of heaven. Many times we live in the kingdom of the earth as if this is all there is. But he is saying to them, not only are there two kingdoms, but there are two masters. He says on the earth, money is the king of the earth. Almighty dollar, somebody said. Somebody went on and said, money, money, mon, money. It got good to them. They said, money, money, money. It 
it got real good. Almighty dollar. People don't let money fool you. Yeah, yeah, y'all know it. Y'all know the song. Even if you don't know the words, you know the attitude. Look holy if you want to. He says there's two masters. He says money is a master, but God is a master. And then he says there are two eyes. There's a good eye and there's a bad eye. And what we begin to look at, Christ is trying to let us know that you can tell which kingdom you believe in based on your relationship with money and your relationship with Christ. He's talking about the eye being the center of man, the seat of man. Many say that when you look in a person's eyes, eyes are the windows to the soul. Mm-hmm. He says, those things that we value most can be identified by what you value, what you esteem higher than the other. If you value if you value the kingdom of God more than the kingdom of the earth, then your principles, your conduct, your trait will begin to look like Christ. If you don't, your character will begin to look corrupt like the world. It's interesting. In verse 19 through 21, he says, look at that passage before we get to our, our, our focus verse. He says to us, watch this, watch this. Everybody say it's about an attitude. It, it really is. Now, a lot of y'all get tight because we're talking about money. Say money. Say it again, money. Say it one more time, money. Now get over it. Get over it. Because you know, you, you want it. You'll do almost anything to get it. But when we come in here and talk about it, you get tight. Don't look at your neighbor. I'm talking to you. You get tight and it's an attitude and it's the way you see things and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I want to change the way you see things. See, as I sat in those uh, funerals the other day and it made me think about how many I've gone home to preach for my family and it all comes down to at the, at the funeral, all we care about is where you saved or not. And we recognize that what we talk about is the deeds, the good deeds you did while you were here. Now, we know that you did some bad stuff, and most times we don't talk about that until they say, you know Uncle Fred, you know he was a liar. Now, I, I know I'm in church, but I ain't gonna come in here and lie because he was a liar. Now, y'all don't wanna hear that, do you? You just wanna hear the good stuff. But that's okay, we're looking for your deeds. In, in verse 19 through 21, he says, do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. He says in verse 20, he says, but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. He says, I know you need treasures. I know you want treasures. He says, don't get caught up on the treasures here. Use your treasure to lay up there. What do you mean, pastor? He says, I need you to know. Look at verse 22 now. He says, I need you to know that as I look at treasures on earth, where your treasures is, did I get verse 21? Go back to 21, please. Thank you. For where your treasures is, there your heart will be also. He finishes verse 21, and he says, where your treasures is, there your heart will be also. He says, where your confidence is, that's where your treasure is. The thing that you value, that's where your treasure is. Now, let me make this clear. He says where your treasure is. Some people like to say that what he is talking about is not money, but he is talking about your time and your talents. But he is not talking about your time and your talents right here. How do you know? Somebody say, how do you know, Pastor? Well, let's go to the beginning of the chapter. 
Because if you want to know the end, you better start from the beginning. He says in 6 and 1 through 4, he starts off the whole thing. He begins to talk about alms. What are alms? Alms are usually things that poor people beg for. Rich folks don't need alms. They are donations. They are gifts. Alms were usually expected for widows, children, beggars, the broken, the discarded. They are begging. And they are begging for alms. They're not begging for your time. They're not begging for your talent. They're begging for your money. I mean, you don't even have to go back to Jerusalem to know this. Go down on 17th and Dawson. I go, go over to close to where they have McDonald's or close to a restaurant. Beggars will come out and say, I'm hungry, but you give them a sandwich and look at the look in their eye. Anybody know I'm telling the truth? They say, I want food, but they know that money answers everything. It may be that they're asking for the money to have enough money to get in the shelter tonight because it's so much a night. They are begging, even though they might say we'll work for food, but they really want, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look at 6, 1 through 4. He says to us, take heed that you do not your charitable deeds before men. You know, don't do them before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Watch this. He is saying to you, when you give your money to the poor, you are doing the work of the kingdom. And God who sits in the kingdom is laying up for you in the kingdom treasures that you can't get down here on earth. Don't you know you have a mansion not made by hands? Don't you know that you shall wear a crown with all kinds of rubies and stones and, and precious diamonds and things like that? It's going to be based on how you live here. You lay up treasures there. When I give my alms, when I give my money to the work of the kingdom, God says you are profiting the kingdom of God on earth and you're laying up treasures in heaven. He says you're laying up treasures in heaven. Look at verse number two. He says, he says don't do it and don't sound a trumpet before as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. That's why we don't, I don't want $50 lines and I don't want $100 lines because people think you something because you got $100. You got $100 but your heart is cold and far from God and, and, and you have made money your master and now you receive our praise because you got 100 But how did you get what you got and who do you give it to? He's saying something here. Look at look on at verse number three. I'm sorry, stay right there. I'm sorry, I'm messing you guys up. He says, I want you to know if you do it to be seen, you have your reward. Uh-huh. He says, he says, you don't want the glory of men. That's why the people that give the most many times, you don't know them. You don't know. You don't know the mother that's on a fixed income just believe in God and she doesn't have everything she wants but she said what I have I'm going to give it to God and he's going to take it good measure pressed down shaken together running over will he give it to me. He, she, may, she may begin to say God I can't pay the light bill but I can trust you to pay all my bills and when I go to the lighthouse company and tell them I can't afford it they look and find out paid in full he says there is a reward for your obedience he says there's a reward for your obedience look at verse number four he says he says that your charitable deeds be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you where 
he sees in secret. That's why the heart is so important. He says, men see your hand, I see your heart. And he says, what you do with your hand tells me and it tells everybody else where your heart is. Mm. Now, now, now that he said that, Look at verse number 22. Now, the heart and the eye switch places. He just told you, he says, I can see your heart by your treasures, what you do with them. Then he begins to change and he begins to talk about now the eye is in the same posture of the heart and he says look in verse 22 the lamp of the body is the eye just like your treasures is in your heart he says the lamp of the body is the eye and therefore if your eye is good your whole body will be full of light look up for a moment this is where our this is where we're taking our our text from he goes on later and says, if your eye be dark, then your whole body is dark. Your eye represents the center of man's consciousness, the center of his soul. Many people say the eye is the window to the soul because usually notice this, when you're talking to somebody and the conversation gets real tight, and many times people will look at you and when things get tough, they don't want you to know how they really feel. They may be saying, I, I'm all right, I'm not mad. I don't have a grudge against you. They, you. they don't want you to see because you ever looked into anybody's eyes and you could tell that there was something more than what they were saying. He says, the eye is the window. It's the portal from which the life of the world comes in and once it's in, it's the portal in which it goes out. And that's why, uh, uh, that's why parents, sometimes you can look at your child, she's looking you dead in your face, and you look in her little eyes, and you already know. You already know. You know her anyway, and you look right in her eye. And, and, no, no, ma'am, I, I didn't do it. Same thing God is doing with us. He says, I'm trying to show you something. We've been talking about generosity and really sometimes people can't be generous because of the condition of their heart. You're stingy. You, you, you're trusting in yourself. You don't believe this belongs to God. You think you did it. And you justify it by any means you want. But, but, we're going to figure out what the word is saying about it. You have to fix your bad eye. See, because both things are available in us. Paul said, when I would do good, evil was always present. And sometimes you're looking straight ahead, but then, you know, you got that cockeyed in the spirit. All of us are a bit cockeyed in the spirit. Let's just go ahead and say that. You know, you, you look all right in the natural, but we, I started to give you some pictures of people that were cockeyed, but I didn't want to make fun of them, and, and people missed the message. Y'all leave out here talking about, Pastor, he, he, he just rude. But in the spirit, in the spirit, I hope you can get a picture of my eyes. <laughs> you look about like that. You, 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 you. He's saying, I need you to notice that I'm looking at the window of our soul, the condition of our soul. And, and he says, you have to be careful that you don't allow the things of these, this world to corrupt you. How can they corrupt you? They make you think and have confidence in that more than him. You got confidence more in your job than you do the one that gave you the job. You have more confidence in your promotion than the one that gave you the promotion. You have more confidence in your life than the one that gave you the life. 
and he begins to let us know he says I want you to know in Proverbs 21 and 2 he says every way in man is right in his own eyes but God searches and weighs his heart God says I know it looks right in your own eyes but I'm going to search and weigh your heart your heart your eye same thing John would say it like this 1 John 2 15 through 17 don't go there love not the world nor the things that are in the world he said because all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life he says I, I love this because God has taken us somewhere as Elder Ford is teaching you about generosity it's more than just money but money is the biggest indicator of your heart and you can try to justify that, that he's talking about your time and your talents but that's not scripture that's man y'all didn't like that that's not scripture it, here's what I mean yes bring all your time your talents and your treasures but in this passage he's not talking about time and, and, and your talents he's talking about your treasures how do I know that because he said don't lay up here on earth where thieves steal no thief can steal your talent he can't steal your time but he can take your treasure he says moth can't decay your time or your talents rust cannot rust your time or your talents he's everybody say he talking about my money mm -hmm. let that marinate in your spirit about 30 seconds mm -hmm. it's not Pastor Campbell talking about your money I didn't write the book I didn't write the book. He's talking about your money. There is a way that your relationship with God can be seen through your relationship with your money. He's saying, I, I love this. He says in Proverbs 20 and through 27, watch this, watch this. It says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord watch this searching all the inner depths of his heart the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord it's searching it's the light it's searching your heart now the lamps back in that day were not candles the lamp he's saying I want to show you something he says the lamp in that day was not a wick candle it was a canister that held the oil <laughs> the anointing the earth moving yoke destroying burden removing anointing that comes from God is inside of you and breaks every chain off your life he says I need you to know the lamp is my presence in your life and when you don't have me in your life your life is dark and gloomy and you begin to see life in the same way see the word doesn't just come to give us a revelation it comes to give us illumination so he's saying the reason that you see the thing and you see it as dark is because you're dark on the inside and the thing is telling you you see it wrong because it's not because it's wrong it's wrong he says he says it's wrong in me he says he says see I'm not being conformed I'm being transformed 
and, and, and that this word is coming to transform my life. And anybody besides me don't always like what God causes us to do in transformation. God comes right where you live and he says, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want that. You want this thing? Yeah, that thing that you value more than me. I want that. I'm coming after that. If you make that your God, I'm coming after that. If you make your children your God, I'm coming after that. If you make your talents your God, I'm coming after that. Because I know there's a God of this earthly kingdom. He wants it too. He says, I'm coming after it. He says, who are you going to serve with it? He says, I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. He says, who are you going to serve with it? He says, that lamp, that lamp. He says, that lamp. He says, uh, I need you to know I am the giver of life. I am the light of the word, uh, his world. He says, I am the light in the heart of men. If you can't see things brightly, it's because on the inside, your light, your lamp is going out. Put that lamp back up for me, please. Oh, they already had it. That's pretty good. Y'all are bad. Go on to live with your bad self. She ahead of me. Thank you. What are you doing to fill the lamp? See, this is part of it. But if you don't do anything apart from this, you'll see in time, you can see bad even in good stuff. You see bad and good stuff because the good stuff is so far away because in, inside of you, the lamp is going out. And now it impacts everything you see. It impacts what you hear. It impacts how you hear. Anybody know I'm telling the truth? Now, come, come on now, listen to me, listen to me. I, I don't think you do, but if you got a problem with me right now, you ain't hearing good. You ain't hearing that good. Mm -mm. You seeing everything. You, you, the devil got you sidetracked with all kinds of stuff. Why well, would make him wear a red tie with that blue suit? He sure do sweat a lot. I, he's spitting and carrying on, hollering. Not hollering, hollering. I brought my friends. I hope he don't dance again. You have missed it. It's not even about me. This is about you. It's not about anybody else. This is about you. I, although I'm talking, the Holy Spirit is having a personal conversation with you. And, 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 and some have already decided, hey, I'm going for my ritual. And once I get that, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. Mike, come here for a second. Come here. Somebody say amen. I need to take care of something. Amen. He says, the spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord. The spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord searching all of the inward parts of the man. And, and, and no, no, it, it, look, I, I like this. It actually says in, in Proverbs 20, 27, it doesn't say all the inner parts of the man. Put that passage up. He says, he says, it says the depths of his heart, the inner depths of his heart. Some passages says his belly. Wait a minute, God. Wait a minute. You 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 you're searching the man's heart, or you're searching his belly. Ah, he's saying I'm searching both. I'm just using different names to describe it. So some have made our bellies our God. I'm gonna try to. 
I'm going to try to hold it in until the service is over. And guess what, the, guess what the devil is doing? He's killing us with a knife and a fork. He's killing us by the lust of we, what we want. I, 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 I speak against the spirit, the devilish spirit of chocolate chip cookies in the name of Jesus. That, that's straight from hell. That's straight from the devil. I rebuke it in the name. Every Snickers bar. I de- right now, I pour down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Every double chocolate, chocolate cake with cold milk. You a liar! Paul says it this way. I like the way Paul says it. Uh, uh, Philippians 3, 18 through 20. Paul is talking to him. I'm telling you, we got to fix a bad eye. He says, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now I'm telling you weeping. I'm trying to get you to hear me that they are actually enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19. He says, I got, the, he says, Whoso, whose end is destruction watch this whose God and whose glory is in their shame who set their mind who set their minds who set their mind on earthly things he said look up real quick he said, I told you from the beginning, there's two kingdoms. There's two eyes. There's two gods. He says, if you are being led astray by your own lust, the things of this world, you don't recognize you are actually an enemy of Christ. That's why he says, you cannot serve money and God. Put that passage back up. I I just wanna, I wanna get all the way through. He says, I need you to see this. Whose end is what? Whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame. You think you live it, but you die it. The stuff you're doing makes you feel good, but you're glorying in the things that actually shame you in the presence of God because you've chosen the world over the kingdom. Who set their minds on earthly things. Look up at me again. He's saying, what's happening I have given the lamp, the anointing, the oil that is supposed to burn bright in your life. He says, a man doesn't light a candle. He's not talking about a wick. He's talking about that vessel that carries the oil. He says, I have lit the fire in you and you can't take the anointing and hide it under a bushel, but put it so those who are lost can see. He says, you've missed it. I gave you a light that's supposed to shine for those who are lost and you're so caught up on what you want you won't do what I called you to do with the gift I gave you he said you're supposed to be setting that up So many people looking at us to see if Jesus is real. Man, they need to know. People are disappointed in us because they don't know Jesus. They just know you. They just know you. All they know is you. Yeah, they're going to give you a hard time. But they want you to stand. They want you to stand. Even though they're trying to pull you down, they don't mean you harm. They just don't know any better. It's their natural nature. And they need you to stand. 
They need you to tell them no. They need you to tell them the truth even though it makes you uncomfortable. They need you to call them out and say there's greater in you. He's saying the end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory is their shame. But in verse number 20, look at that real quickly. He says, watch this, watch this. He says, we, it, the world has blinded us for our citizenship is not here. He said, man, this world is not your home. At every funeral, there was no, I was going to say no body, but that person wasn't in that box. Everybody that went up, I went and buried my sister. I looked in the box. That was not her. I knew it. Everybody knew it. Deep calls into deep. My spirit was trying to connect and I knew it was dead. We have to be heavenly minded. But we've become so dark because all kinds of things are coming into our ear gate, our eye gate. And, and, and we don't even know. I, I made a joke last week that some folks are listening to the wrong music when they get in here. We know that they've been thumping it, thumping it, thump, thump. <sighs> you got all that stuff in your mind and then you want to come in here and praise God. It don't work. And see, we're not even mindful of it anymore. He says, I need you to understand, you must fix your bad eye. You got to fix how you look at it. You got to fix how you see the word. You got to fix how God lays out his concepts and his doctrine before you. I know it's hard. I know it's not easy. I know it goes against everything that you were taught in the natural, but we know that there's a war going on that flesh and spirit are at enmity against one and another so every time I try to give you the word of God you get distracted by something that pulls on your flesh that stops you from living by faith and you're caught up and you're caught between and God is saying I need you to make a choice it doesn't get easier when you make a choice how many of y'all know it gets harder He says, my spirit is searching your heart. It's searching your attitude. It's searching your disposition. It's searching your commitment. You can't get caught up on what other people are doing. Thank God my wife didn't stop going to church because I wouldn't go. She was the candle. For me, she was the candle. You are the light that some people are watching and you don't even know they're going as you go. And you're so conceited and self-centered you ain't thinking about nobody. He says, I need you to know there are two kingdoms. There's two gods. There's two eyes. He says, if your eye be dark, your whole body, everything you see, everything you hear, everything you feel, everything you touch. It's all dark. He says, he gives a parable over in Matthew 20, 15. Don't go there. 
told the parable about the workers in the vineyard. Some came and they worked at 6 p.m. to a full day. Other came and they came at 9. At the end of the day, Jesus in this parable pays them both the same wage. The ones that begin to work at 6, they said, this isn't fair. Don't you ever feel that? God, you're blessing him. He ain't done all I've done. God, you, you, why, why are you promoting them? They, they don't work as hard as I do. He says, you got a problem with me being generous. And then he says, if your eye be dark, your whole soul is dark. The same eye there is the same eye here. Many of you can't catch the generous message because you're too busy counting up what people did. How did they get homeless? I ain't giving my money to the homeless. If it wasn't for the grace of God, there goes. You say, I can't be generous. There are times when God will come on my heart and I'll give to somebody and, I, and, and, and people will look at me and say, why did you give to that beggar? Don't you know what he's going to do with that money? There are many times I don't, but when the Spirit of God moves on my heart because I'm a conduit for his blessing, he gives through me, and I don't care the man may have received it here, but God received it there. So when God uses me, when God uses me down here to give to the homeless, to give to the broken, to give to the beggar, to give out of my heart and commitment to him, when I come to the church and I give, to, my tithe belongs to him. It is not optional for me because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwells therein. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And when I stop letting money be my God, he could be my God. That wasn't easy for me. I don't know why this is messing me up so. Wasn't easy for me. I come from great poverty. Wasn't easy for me. I worked hard. Wasn't easy for me. They talked about me. It wasn't easy for me. Took me 20 years to get a bachelor's degree. It wasn't easy for me. Six different schools, 20 years. Six years to get a master's degree. And now I'm ready to get my money and God says he wants it. God was saying that all that time I thought I was doing it. <laughs> he was doing it. The school I went to, I, I didn't have the grace to get into. I shouldn't have got the job. I shouldn't have got the opportunity. But God was for me. And if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. If somebody know what I'm saying, somebody shout yeah, yeah. Y'all stand to your feet. I need you to know. I need you to know. God says you got to fix your eye. It is not about who you're dealing with, man of God. This is about you. Woman of God, this is about you. People of God, this is about you. They're supposed to be the lamp of the Lord on the inside of us. It wasn't until I gave my money because I heard God that he released this ministry in my life. He said, the last thing that you were, I was holding on to, I didn't care if people liked me. I was promoted and I had money. I didn't care. 
I, I, I was running. I was running from poverty. I, I, I didn't care what it took to get out. I was never, ever, 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 ever going back. And the last test, God called me to ministry. I didn't want to be dependent on the church. I didn't want to be dependent on the people. So when God called me, I went and got my real estate license. I came up with my plan, and, and I figured I would start a franchise, a, milita- a, a real estate establishment. Went through the school, went through Century 21's training at Sawyer. I was in prayer one day, and God says, I didn't call you to do real estate. I'm like, what? God, I don't want to be dependent on these people. I, I don't want them to think they, I, I want anything from you. I said I'm a man's man. You don't have to give me nothing. I'll get it myself. That's what I said. And God said to me, it's not the church. It's not man that you don't want to be dependent on. It's not the church you don't want to be dependent on. See, you don't want to be dependent on me. See, because all that time I was in the church, the brother, the deacon, the minister, the elder, the assistant pastor, the youth pastor, the choir director, the trustee, all that time I was... It should have been God, but it was me. He said, I want you to do it. I want you to lay your gift at my feet. I want my light to shine through you. And when I caused you to be humble, I was a major, had a company of 500 Marines. Went to a church. Elder by that time. The pastor said he wanted us to go and work in the bathroom. Huh? I went and worked in the bathroom and I would see my Marines come in and and, and they would wipe their hands and I would offer them a towel and offer them a mint. They said, oh, sir, you don't have to do that. But I do. While men receive the benefit... God got the glory some of y'all can't you, 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 can't, you can't get with this generosity message because you think somebody taking something from you God is saying I'm trying to get something to you it's not about Pastor Campbell it's not about Elder Ford it's not about these ministers this is about you this is about your lamp this is about your light this is about your life This is about your growth. This is about you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Come on, praise team. I didn't plan to say any of that. I did plan to tell you, you have to fix your bad eye. It's in your attitude. It's in your disposition. You find you can't take anything. You can't handle anything. One little thing and you're done. One little thing and you give up. One little thing you throw in the towel. And you say, he made me do it. She made me do it. This world is not your home. You are just passing through. And some, let me talk about this and then I'll close. Men, you won't give God a chance because you're too busy looking at hypocrites in your past. I I would go to a church if I could find one that was perfect. Go all the way back to Genesis, you still won't find it. 
but you but you're content to sit on the outside because you think you're a good person but your goodness is a trick God ain't looking at your goodness to see if you are worthy to come in the kingdom he's looking for his glory on you he's looking for the blood of the lamb he's looking for the light of the world he's looking for your lamp to be lit and burning bright he's looking for you to die to yourself so you can live unto him and you sit back with your proud and your arrogant self you think you're doing it for the right reason you've been pulled a trick on you the devil have bamboozled you and run amok on you and he hopes you die before you meet Jesus this world is not your home there are two kingdoms ministers come first 